Okay. All right. Hello, good morning. My name is Katrina Salazar. I'm the president of the California Board of Accountancy, and I would like to welcome everyone present and online participating to uh, this July 27th, 2023 meeting of the California Board of Accountancy. The board has provided an opportunity for the public to participate via the WebEx platform today. When we take public comments, we will begin by taking public comment from those individuals attending first at the Sacramento meeting location. I'll then ask the moderator uh, to open up the lines for public comments. As we have a member, Mr. Jacobson, participating at a noticed alternate location, I would like to ask at this time if any members of the public are in attendance at your location. Uh, no, Madam President, there's no one, uh, no, no member of the public here. Thank you, Member Jacobson. So, um, should that change, would you please let us know immediately, and then we will revise our open public comment to include any individuals at your site? Yes, I will. Fantastic. I would also like to share that those interested in making public comment, uh, you will be allotted up to five minutes to make those public comments. So thank you for that. And I would at this point like to turn the meeting over to Ms. Reed for the roll call. Nancy Corrigan. Nancy Corrigan, present. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines, present. Dan Jacobson. Um, here. Here. Joe Rosenbaum. Here. Katrina Salazar. Present. Michael Savoy. Michael Savoy, present. Yen Tu. Here. And Evangeline Ward. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you for confirming quorum, Ms. Reed. Um, at this point in the meeting, we always um, reflect back upon our board's mission. And so I would like to remind you that the California Board of Accountancy's mission is to protect consumers by ensuring only qualified licensees practice public accountancy in accordance with established professional standards. This mission is derived from the statutory requirement that protection of the public shall be the highest priority for the California Board of Accountancy in exercising its licensing, regulatory, and disciplinary functions. Whenever the protection of the public is inconsistent with other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount. Thank you very much for listening and uh, reflecting upon that mission. Um, there are a few housekeeping items uh, before we move forward with the agenda. So I'd like to remind our speakers and presenters to be sure to turn your microphones on when speaking, turn them off when not. As you speak, bring the microphone close uh, so that we can hear you both in the room and participating via WebEx. Um, finally, I would like to comment on the fact that some of the folks here in Sacramento may notice bright lights and a camera crew in the room. Um, I wanted to share that there will be some uh, background B-roll filming happening for some video footage, and so you may see a camera move around the room. Please do your best to just ignore their presence and uh, not engage with the camera, um, but thank you so much for your willingness to uh, support our endeavors with our outreach and communications. So with that, I would like to um, conclude the opening and move along to agenda item number one, which is public comments for items not on the agenda. So I somewhere I have notes on how to do that, but I would like to first ask if there is any public comment here in Sacramento. Seeing none, I'd like to invite our WebEx moderator to open for public comment online. This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open on WebEx. If you would like to participate and you are logged in, press the question mark inside of the square typically located in the bottom right corner of your WebEx screen and type the word comment in the text field that appears. Make sure you send it to all panelists before clicking the send button. If you are calling in, press star three from your telephone to raise your virtual hand. At this time, there are no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close WebEx. Thank you, and that concludes item 
agenda agenda item number one and we move on to item two which is uh, my report of the president so i would like to um, bring your attention to the resolution for retired california board of accountancy member Sudia dd owen cpa and share with you whereas dd owens was appointed by governor gavin newsom and she has faithfully served as a member of the california board of accountancy from july 7th 2020 through june 19th of 2023 and whereas she served as vice chair and member of the enforcement program oversight committee chair and member of the committee of professional conduct and california board of accountancy member liaison to the enforcement advisory committee and whereas she is a member of the California Society of CPAs, Information Systems Audit and Control Association, Los Angeles Institute of Internal Auditors, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, KPMG Network of Women, KPMG Pride Network, and KPMG Lat Hispanic Latino Network in LA. And whereas Dudia DDON CPA has been a partner at KPMG LLP since 2015, where she was managing director and senior manager from 2007 to 2015. And whereas throughout her term of service at all times, Dee Dee Owens gave fully of herself and her ideas and acted forthrightly and conscientiously, always with the public interest and welfare in mind. And whereas her colleagues here wish to express to her their high esteem and regard. Therefore, be it resolved that the members of this California Board of Accountancy express heartfelt appreciation to Dee Dee Owens for the outstanding contribution she made during her term of service on the California Board of Accountancy and on behalf of the consumers of California. With that all said, I would like to um, ask for a motion to accept this resolution. Okay, Ms. Hines. Move to adopt the resolution. Okay, thank you, I have a first. I would like to second that. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a second um, from Ms. Chu. And um, is there any public, is there any comment? Okay, seeing no comment from our board members, I would like to open it up for public comment in Sacramento. Seeing none, I'd like to open up for public comment via WebEx. Moderator, may you assist? Yes, this is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you're logged in, you can press the question mark inside of the square, type comment, send it to all panelists. If you're calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand. There are no requests at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. All right, with that, I would like to please call for the vote. Ms. Reed, can you assist? Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Carrie Ann Farrell-Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Yes. Tony Lynn? Yes. Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Yin Tu? Yes. And Evangeline Ward? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you for that, Ms. Reed. Moving on to agenda item 2B, we have the resolution for retiring Enforcement Advisory Committee member Jackson G. Johnson, CPA. Mr. Johnson has served on the Enforcement Advisory Committee since July 25, 2019, and his term will end July 31, 2023. Can I get a motion to accept this resolution? Okay. Ms. Corrigan? Yes, I move to accept this resolution. Thank you for that first. A second? Okay. I will second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Chu. And I, I do see Mr. Jacobson's hand up. Sorry. I will uh, try to uh, observe that. Thank you for participating remotely. All right. Uh, with that, I would like to open for comment or discussion regarding the motion on the table. Seeing none, I would like to request any public comment here in Sacramento. Seeing none, I'd like to ask our WebEx moderator to please open WebEx for public comment on this agenda item 2B. This is the moderator. The Q&A is open. Instructions on the screen for your reference. If you're calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand.
No request. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close WebEx. All right, with that, I would like to call for a vote. Ms. Reed? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Tony Lynn? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Yes. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. And Nancy Corrigan? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you for that, Ms. Reed. So moving along to item 2C, we have the discussion and review of the California Board of Accountancy 2024 Sunset Review Report. So I would like to invite Ms. Deanne Pierce, Assistant Executive Officer, uh, to present. Thank you so much. So the purpose of this agenda item is to provide the California Board of Accountancy an opportunity to review the CBA's draft 2024 Sunset Review Report. This version of the draft report has all sections, including the previously re reviewed materials from the March and the May meetings. There will be another draft to review at the September CBA meeting, which will incorporate edits and feedback received today, and will also include the remaining year-end data that wasn't available for today's meeting. The November meeting will be the last review of the report for any final edits, and then it will be submitted to the legislature by January 4th. At the May meeting, I had mentioned that we were still waiting for the final questionnaire from the legislature. This was received in mid-July, and there were some minor changes that we've captured for this draft. There were two new questions added, questions 27 and 63, which staff are pre preparing answers and will be provided in the version for sep uh, CBA member review at the September meeting. Another change was that the section regarding customer service satisfaction surveys was removed and added as an attachment. So this impacted the numbering of the sections and the questions. And then one last item before I provide an overview of each section, staff are working with the DCA design team on the layout and formatting. So the draft document has already been sent to DCA. So the September version for member review will look much different than it does today. So starting with section one, background and description, we've made some changes to this section following the last meeting. We added an additional year of meeting attendance for fiscal year 2018-19. We added information regarding our relocation project, uh, information for legislation and regulations for 2023, and the biggest change was adding information about the SURE CPA project. And I'm happy to answer any questions from members on section one, or if there are none, I can move on to section two. Okay, thank you. Section two is fiscal and uh, is regarding fiscal and staff, and it starts on page 35. This section was pre presented for review in May. The primary changes in this version was expanding on the information related to our fee increase, which is reflected on pages 37 through 40. We are still waiting for final budget numbers for fiscal year 22-23, which we anticipate receiving for the September meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions, or if there are none, I can move on to section three. Okay. Section three is the licensing program, which starts on page 55. This is the first time you are seeing this section. As you will notice, there is data for our licensee population, examination, licensing, and our continuing education verification programs. There is also information regarding the CBA's compliance with various military-related assistance provisions. This section contains a new question, number 27, which as I mentioned, will have a proposed response for the September meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions, or if there are none, I can move on to section four. Section four is the enforcement program. It starts on page 79. This is also the first time this section is being presented. Section four provides a comprehensive overview of all the activities and related data for the activities in the enforcement division. There is information regarding unlicensed activity, which will also be touched on again in section six. You will also notice a fair amount of information regarding citation and fines, cost recovery, and the CBA status and efforts on collecting these monies. I'm happy to answer any questions, or if there are none, I can move on to the next section. Okay. Section five is public information practices, and it starts on page 103. With the exception of renumbering items and making some updates to wording, nothing sig significant has been changed since the May version. And if there are no questions, I can move on to section six. 
Section six is online practice issues. It starts on page 108. The core of this information discusses unlicensed practice online via the internet and staff activities to identify and respond to unlicensed activity, regardless of whether it is through the internet or traditional means. There's any questions or I can move on to section seven. Okay. Section seven is workforce development and job creation and it starts on page 110. This section was presented during the May CBA meeting and the only change since that time is the answer to question 59 where we talk about the CBA's goals for processing applications under 30 days. This section does also contain the new question number 63 and as mentioned, we'll have a proposed response for that at the September board meeting. And I'm happy to answer any questions or move on to the next section. Section eight is current issues. It starts on page 114. This section was presented at the May meeting and there have only been minor wording changes, but the core responses are the same. And if there are no questions, I can move on to the next section. Section nine is board actions and responses to COVID-19 and it starts on page 116. This information is being presented for the first time. The response to the question highlights the activities the CBA took during the COVID-19 pandemic, including the transition to virtual meetings, continuing education extensions, extending timelines for candidates to take sections of the uniform CPA exam. We also highlighted the proactive step we took to notify candidates of our processing timeframes. And I'm happy to answer any questions or I can move on to the next section. Okay. Section 10 is board action and response to prior sunset issues and it starts on page 118. The CBA reviewed this information during the March meeting. The primary change since that time has been, the, um, has been adding additional information for issue one relating to our initial license and license renewal fee levels. We have included additional information regarding the recent activities to incre increase the CBA's fees, including reference to Senate Bill 816. This information will be updated again once we know the final outcome of the legislation. And I'm happy to answer any questions or I can move on to section 11. Okay. Section 11 is new issues and it starts on page 131. Issues one through four were presented at the March meeting and issue five regarding peer review was discussed during the CPC meeting in May and subsequently approved by the CBA. Each of these issues have proposed statutory language which are included in section 12 as attachments beginning with page 142. And if there are no questions, I can move on to the last section. So section 12 are the required attachments and they begin on page 134. This section will include the CBA's customer satisfaction surveys and additional information requested by the legislature. Some of the requested attachments will be links or list the website location to the primary source in lieu of attaching physical copies. This section will be a little bit more refined for the September CBA meeting. And before I conclude my presentation, I'm happy to answer any questions from members. If there are none, I will turn it back over to President Salazar. Are there any uh, comments or questions? I'm not seeing any, but I want to make sure to give some time. Sort of to, to add a little filler, I guess I would say thank you to Deanne and to the team for pulling this together. It is excellent. And I, I for one, appreciate the various iterations where we can view it over multiple meetings. Um, and I would just remind folks, um, you know, if you find non-substantive edits, uh, obviously we don't have, I don't personally have questions, um, but I will email a few non-substantive suggestions, which don't really warrant committee conversation. But um, again, if any of the members, as you uh, continue along, if you see things, remember this is a process and, and those sort of edits or, or suggestions or questions can be uh, forwarded to staff between meetings to be put on the agenda for discussion. So just a reminder that this is a lengthy process and uh, we appreciate everyone's um, participation. In it. I mean, my only what? comment is I'm a little bit surprised that there's only two new questions, uh, unless they were thrilled with our report last time and I just want to hear updates from it. But I'm, I guess I'm a little bit surprised with everything else that's going on in this world, especially in the world of accounting, that only two new questions were asked. May I respond? Yes, please. So the questionnaire is actually one questionnaire for all boards and bureaus. So it's not, this questionnaire isn't specific to the Board of Accountancy. 
So um, the questions may not necessarily be directly related to us, but just in general to Department of Consumer Affairs boards and bureaus. And so, um, but yeah, two new questions was not bad. <laughs> One of them I don't, under, I don't understand at all, but that's you guys will work on that a little bit. Uh, I mean, number 27 makes no sense to me at all, but but regardless, I'm sure you'll answer it. Uh, NA, not applicable. Okay. Excellent. And um, so I'm, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm not seeing any additional comments here. We do need to open for public comment as well before concluding this agenda item. So I'd like to invite public comment here in the Sacramento location. And seeing none, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the WebEx Q&A for any public comments on agenda item 2C. This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. The instructions will be on the screen shortly. There they are. For those who are logged in and would like to participate, click the question mark inside of the square, type comments into 12 panelists. Those who are calling in from your telephone, you can press star three to raise your virtual hand. At this time, I see no request for public comment. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close the WebEx. And that concludes uh, item 2C, and we're now moving along to the Department of Consumer Affairs Director's Report on Departmental Activities. And I would like to acknowledge and welcome uh, Judy Bucciarelli, our Manager of Board and Bureau Relations from the Department of Consumer Affairs to our meeting and uh, turn, the, uh, turn the meeting over for her presentation. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today. It's good to see all of you again. Uh, to begin, I'll start with a DEI update, which of course is diversity, equity, and inclusion. On May 12, 2023, DCA's DEI steering committee held its quarterly meeting in person and elected chairperson Yafana Lamar, who currently serves at the department's tribal, as the department's tribal liaison and is the chief of legislation for the contractor state license board. Paul Sanchez, who is the Executive Officer of Speech, Language, Pathology, Pathology and Audiology Board, was elected as Vice Chair. The committee discussed training, strategic planning, and DEI activities through the end of the calendar year. Providing employees access to training is a priority for the DEI Steering Committee. In June, the department began offering three DEI courses, which are available to all DCA employees. The courses are Understanding the Value of DEI in the Workplace, How to Decode Our Unconscious Bias, and Unleash the Power of Generational Differences. We are pleased to report that the response from employees to participate in these new DEI learning opportunities has been significant with high registration and attendance numbers. We expect the number of participants to increase and that additional courses will be offered in the coming months. DCA is working on a virtual DEI training for board members that will be available at the end of October or in the beginning of November. I look forward to updating you in the months ahead on the progress of the DEI steering committee. Next, I'll cover in-person meetings and the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. The changes to the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act that allow board members to not have to notice their meeting location or meet in an ADA accessible location expired on July 1. Therefore, beginning July 1, public meetings are subject to the traditional pre-COVID requirements for open meetings. DCA's boards and bureaus should be prepared to conduct public meetings compliant with the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act. This includes whether a meeting is held at a single centralized location or at multiple teleconference locations, each physical meeting location will need to be identified in the public meeting notices and agendas. Board members must attend meetings in person at the notice meeting locations. All notice meeting locations, including locations where a single board member will be, must be ADA accessible, have an agenda posted, and be open to the public. 
the public will be permitted to attend meetings at any notice meeting location. Additionally, members of the public need to be able to hear the meeting and participate in public comment from each location. DCA has Bagley Keen Open Meeting has an Bagley Keen Open Meeting Act guide available and has provided your executive officer with a list of available meeting locations throughout the state. Please reach out to Board and Bureau Relations with any questions or concerns. DCA is committed to helping the boards to to make through make this a smooth transition. SB 544, which may allow for some meetings to be held without noticing the location of the board member, thus allowing remote virtual meetings, is still going through the legislative process, and the department's Division of Legislative Affairs is working with stakeholders and providing updates to the boards and bureaus on the status of the bill. Moving on, the Enlightened Enforcement Project. On July 21, 2023, DCA will attend the third walkthrough session for the Enlightened Enforcement Project that has been piloted by the Dental Board of California. The walkthrough session will cover citations, discipline, and probation processes. The project aims to learn best practices between boards to improve efficiency and standardize procedures for all boards and bureaus. Equally, equally important, the Data Governance Project. DCA is continuing its efforts to improve its reports regarding licensing and enforcement activities. The director recently led multiple work group meetings beginning in late April through early July with staff from each board and bureau to update the data metrics reported in DCA's annual report. DCA's goal is to ensure consistency where we report data, such as our annual report, DCA's data portal, and board and bureau sunset reports. Future meetings are expected in August and ongoing to help build new reports or modify existing ones to provide these new metrics for next year's annual report. Additionally, DCA held a meeting on July 17th with all boards and bureaus to review guidance on how boards and bureaus can compile and report data to the department for inclusion in this year's upcoming annual report. The department has asked all boards and bureaus to provide their annual report data by Friday, August 4th. If extensions are needed, please contact DCA's executive office. Next, to further to the department's efforts to reach Californians we serve, DCA will request boards and bureaus translate any press releases into Spanish. California's top non-English language spoken is Spanish and establishing a standard of translating releases into both English and Spanish will enhance the reach of information release. Boards and bureaus are also encouraged to evaluate any additional languages outside of Spanish that may serve their audiences. For additional information, please contact DCA Board and Bureau Relations. And next I have several board member training reminders. Onboarding reminder, board members who have been appointed and reappointed cannot begin their service or perform any official functions without first taking the oath of office. Unless otherwise provided, the oath may be taken before any officer authorized to administer oaths. Board members should contact their executive officer to arrange taking the oath of office. Board members will be required to complete the documents listed on the board member appointment checklist or HR 5 and return them to the Office of Human Resources before assuming duties, but no less than 30 days after their appointment or reappointment. Duties cannot be assumed and appointments cannot be processed until documents are received and are accurately completed. Incomplete packets may delay per diem payments and travel reimbursements due to the member. There are two DCA-wide mandatory trainings for 2023. This includes sexual harassment prevention training and information security awareness. All DCA employees and appointees, including board members, will need to complete the two-hour supervisory sexual harassment prevention training this year. This training is required every odd-numbered year and is online and self-paced. Any board members with an assigned DCA email 
are required to complete the information security awareness fundamentals training. This training addresses everyone's role in protecting DCA data and information. The training is online and required every year. Both the sexual harassment prevention training and information security awareness training are available in the department's learning management system. If board members need assistance in accessing LMS and these trainings, please reach out to your board liaison or DCA Board and Bureau Relations. Keep in mind that all state travel arrangements must be made through DCA's authorized travel agency, Cal Travel Store, or Concur. When traveling by air on official state business, board members and staff must use the most economical fares possible. If the flight is changed, there may be additional charges. Flight changes for personal convenience are not permitted or justified, and the traveler is responsible for any associated charges. Please contact your board liaison or DCA Board and Bureau Relations if you have any travel questions. And the final reminder is regarding board member orientation training. Board members must complete BMOT within one year of their appointment or reappointment. On October 10th, 2023, BMOT will be offered virtually. This will be the last meeting of the year. Members can register for this training via LMS. And thank you again for providing me the opportunity to present the DCA update and I'll turn it back to President Salazar and I welcome any questions from the board. Thank you, Ms. Bucciarelli. Do we have any questions from our board members? All right, seeing none, um, I appreciate that. Public comments? All right, we're gonna go do public comment as well. So I'd like to invite any public comment here in Sacramento location. And seeing no public comment, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open up the Q&A for public comment on agenda item 2D. This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. Instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that question mark, type comments, and it will panel it. Those who are calling in, press star to raise your virtual hand. There are no requests at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A and thank you very much for uh, coming in person to present to us today. All right, so moving along in our agenda, that brings us to the report of the vice president. So I would like to invite uh, vice president to uh, for her report. Thank you, Chair Salazar. This item is a recommended uh, recommendation to the reappointment of Jeffrey Bagasquin. I think I didn't mean to butcher that name, uh, CPA, and the appointment of Chris Smith, CPA, to the Co-Occupation Committee. The Co-Occupation Committee assists the CPA in its insure activities, licensure activities by reviewing the experience of applicants for licensure and is making recommendation to the CPA. This includes conducting work paper reviews with the applicant or the employer present to verify that the responses provided are reflective of the requisite experience for licensure. I have conferred with the CBA acting executive officer to verify that each individual has met the appropriate requirements for license renewal and have demonstrated the skills and knowledge to serve as member of the qualification committee. I would like to make a motion to reappoint Jeffrey Bagginskin CPA through May 31st, 2025 and appoint Chris Smith CPA to the qualifications committee through July 31st, 2025. At this point, I would like to uh, return this to Chair Salazar for a second. Thank you, Vice President Chu, for that uh, first. And I would like to request a second. We have Ms. Hines. Second the motion. Thank you for that second, Ms. Hines. Um, so we have a motion, a first and a second. Um, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, I believe we need to open at this point for public comments. So I'd like to invite any public comment here in Sacramento. 
And seeing no public comment, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the Q&A for public comment on agenda item 3B. This is the moderator Q&A. Now open instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you are calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand. No request, would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, moderator, please close the WebEx. And with that, we are ready to move on for the vote. Ms. Reed? Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. Evangeline Ward? Yes. Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Yes. And Tony Lynn? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you for that. Uh, Ms. Chu, I'd like to turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. This item is to recommend the reappointment of Laura Ross, CPA, to the Peer Review Oversight Committee. The Peer Review Oversight Committee assists the CPA in an advisory capacity in its oversight of the peer review program. I've conferred with the CPA acting executive officer to verify that Ms. Ross, CPA has met the appropriate requirement to license a renewal and has demonstrated the skills and knowledge to continue to serve as member of the peer review oversight committee. I would like to make a motion to reappoint Laura Ross CPA to the Peer Review Oversight Committee through July 31st, 2025. With that, uh, turn it back to uh, Ms. Chair for a second. All right, thank you, Ms. Chu. We have a first on the table, and I am looking for a second, please. Okay, Ms. Corgan? I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a first and a second. Any discussion or comments from our board members? Seeing none, I'd like to invite any public comment on this agenda item in Sacramento. And seeing none, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the Q&A for public comment on agenda item 3C. The Q&A is now open. Instructions are on the screen for your reference. Click on the question mark, type comments, send to all panelists, or if you're calling in, press star 3 to raise your virtual hand. No requests at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. And with that, we're ready to proceed to a vote. So I'd like to uh, turn it over to Ms. Reed. Tony Lim? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Yes. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Evangeline Ward? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. And Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. The motion carries. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. And congratulations, Mr. Beginski, Mr. Smith, and Ms. Ross on that. Um, sorry, Ms. Chu, please proceed with the remainder of your report. Thank you. And for item 3D, I would like to provide members with an update regarding recruitment activities for CPA advisory committees. Staff have been actively recruiting to fill several vacancies on the advisory committee. However, the CPA has received very little interest. Currently, the EAC and uh, PROC and QC have one or more vacancies within each committee. Current recruitment activities are ref uh, refer uh, referenced in the agenda item. Um, in all the requirement that is involved. We have attached a resource guide for members to use should they know individual who may be interested in participating as a member. You are also welcome to send Mr. Franzina an email with an individual's contact information and he will reach out. I have tested that theory and it does work. <laughs> he has been gracious to reaching out to recommendations. Any assistance that CPA member can provide by sharing information with colleagues on this opportunity would be welcome. Staff will be providing update on recruitment activity at future meetings to keep the CPA apprised of any recruitment efforts. Thank you for uh, chair. Thank you very much. All right.
Okay, so uh, I do before in conclusion uh, of this agenda item want to uh, revisit any board member comments on item D, which was just presented. All right, seeing none, we do get to a now and by public comment. So is there any public comment here in Sacramento? Seeing none, I'd like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the WebEx for public comment on agenda item 3D. The Q&A is now open. Instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click the question mark, type comment, send to all panelists, or raise your hand if you're calling in by pressing star 3 from your phone. No requests at this time. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. And that concludes our agenda item and actually brings us uh, to a scheduled break. However, it is not quite that time. So I'm going to request uh, that everyone bears with me with some flexibility in rearranging some agenda items uh, in order. So we are going to move along. I want to give you a little preview um, to the report of the Secretary Treasurer, which is item number eight, which was originally scheduled for tomorrow morning. And then we will proceed time allowing to item 11, which will be the regulations, uh, which was also scheduled for tomorrow morning. So just with that little preview, I would like to invite our Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Rosenbaum, uh, to initiate his presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, included in your materials on tab number eight is the report of the secretary treasurer. Uh, and this verbal report will um, give you an update of some of the, some of the, the uh, high points. On June 27, 2023, the governor signed the budget and the CBA's budget authority for fiscal year 23-24 was finalized at $19,059,000, representing a 2.7% increase over the previous year's budget. The payback of the $10 million general fund loan remains scheduled for fiscal year 23-24. This loan will be repaid with interest in the approximate amount of $102,000. At the May meeting, the CBA approved a statutory proposal to increase the license renewal and initial license fees and the accounting firm application fee. As mentioned earlier, this proposal is now included in Senate Bill 816. If approved, the initial phase would be implemented on July 1, 2024, and the second step would be implemented July 1, 2026. This fee increase will enable the CBA to resolve the current annual negative cash flow where authorized expenditures are exceeding revenues. This concludes my presentation of the Secretary Treasurer report. I'm happy to answer any questions or have staff available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Member Rosenbaum. Um, do we have any comments from our board members? Okay, seeing none, um, uh, is there any public comment on this agenda item? We are currently on eight, report of the Secretary Treasurer. And seeing none here in Sacramento, I'd like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open WebEx for public comment on item eight, report of the Secretary Treasurer. The Q&A is now open. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that question mark, type comment, send it to all panelists. If you're calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand. No request. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Moderator, please close the Q&A. And that concludes uh, our agenda item. And I would like to uh, thank uh, our Secretary Treasurer for the flexibility in accelerating that report presentation for us today. So as I mentioned, the next item uh, to move along to is item 11, regulations. And so um, I would like to invite Michelle Center, our Chief of Licensing Division, uh, to present this very lengthly titled agenda item, 11A. So I'll let you handle the uh, item description. <laughs> Thank you, President Salazar. 
Um, the item before you, um, item 11, is a discussion and possible action to consider public comments and amend California Code of Regulations Title 16, Section 6, 7.1, 8.2, 9.2, .2, and repeal Section 13, and to add CCR uh, Sections 7.3 and 9.3. Uh, for shorthand, we refer to these as as regulations related to early entry as well as CPA evolution. Don't you like the shorthand better? <laughs> the purpose of this agenda item is to provide the board the opportunity to accept or reject public comments received during the public comment period, approve the amended regulatory text in California Code of Regulations Section 7.1, Adopt amended regulatory text in CCR Section 6, 7.1, 7.3, 8.2, 9.2, 9.3, and 13. At its September 2022 meeting, this board approved initiating a rulemaking to amend applicable regulatory sections to, to address early entry and the launch of the 2024 CPA exam aligned with the CPA Evolution Initiative. Following this approval, the CBA filed the necessary documents with the Office of Administrative Law. The public comment period began on May 26, 2023, and just concluded on July 11, 2023. In terms of timing, it is important to note that during the 45-day public comment period, NASBA issued a letter of recommendation to all boards of accountancy to allow candidates 30 months from the date the initial credit is earned to complete the remaining sections of the CPA exam. Included in this letter was a targeted implementation date of January 1, 2024. The NASBA letter is included as attachment one. Consequently, a letter in support for extending the conditional credit period was sent by the board to NASPA on June 22nd, 2023, and is included as attachment two. During the 45-day public comment period, the CBA received two written comments, which are included in the agenda item. Both comments are in support of extending the credit period to 30 months. Uh, please refer to page five of attachment three um, for the public comments. Page five and attachment three are where those public comments are. Staff recommends that the board accept each comment, each of those two comments, and approve the drafted response on pages five and six. The drafted response would state, the CBA accepts this comment, the CBA amended proposed CCR section 7.1 to allow for a rolling 30 month conditional credit period. The changes to the time frame for the extension of conditional credit are based on and consistent with the recommendations provided by NASBA's April 2023 announcement supporting the adoption of an amendment to the Uniform Accountancy Act Model Rule 5-7. Staff also recommends the board approve the proposed amended regulatory text found in Section 7.1 of Attachment 4. The amended text extends the conditional credit period to 30 months, beginning on January 1, 2024. Given the extension from 18 months to 30 months is substantive, an additional public comment period of 15 days is necessary. Staff recommends the CBA adopt staff's recommendation as written on page seven of the item, and you can thank me later that I'm not reading it. <laughs> uh, that concludes my presentation. I will now turn it back over to President Salazar. Thank you for injecting clarity and simplicity into this. So much appreciated. All right, so at this point, we do have a staff uh, recommendation and, and there's just a lot in here. So before I do call for the motion, I do want to make sure there weren't any questions for staff from our members before we proceed. Okay, seeing none, it's a well put together packet. So thank you. Uh, with that, we do have a recommendation to adopt the motion that is outlined here in uh, robust detail. And so we are looking for a first on this motion. Ms. Hines. Move to adopt the staff recommendations as presented. Fantastic, thank you so much for that first. And Ms. Tu. I will second that. 
All right, Ms. Chu, we have a second. Uh, any additional discussion regarding motion on the floor? At this point, I would like to invite any public comment here at the Sacramento location. And seeing none, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open up the Q&A for any public comment on item 11 regulations. Item A, Q &A. thank you. Sorry, the Q&A is now open. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you're logged in and would like to participate, click that question mark inside of the square, type comments, send it to all panelists. If you're calling in, press star three from your phone to raise your virtual hand. At this time, I see no request for public comment. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. And with that, I believe we are prepared to call for a vote. Ms. Reed. Nancy Corrigan? Yes. Carrie Ann Farrell Hines? Yes. Dan Jacobson? Yes. Yes. Tony Lynn? Yes. Ariel Pay? Sorry. Joe Rosenbaum? Yes. Katrina Salazar? Yes. Michael Savoy? Yes. Yen Tu? Yes. And Evangeline Ward? Yes. The motion carries. Fantastic, thank you very much. And thank you, Ms. Center, for that uh, report. Um, since uh, I did not preview this, I would like to share that the next agenda item up would be item number nine, and that is our report of the executive officer. So I would uh, like, before we move along to 9A, request is there any items to add before we move to the administration activity report? Okay, so then we are now on agenda item 8A, which is our administration activity report, and I would like to invite our manager of administrative services to present, Deanne. I'm actually going to present on her behalf. Today. Fantastic. Well, then I would like to invite Deanne Pierce uh, to make that presentation as the, as the assistant executive officer. Thank you so much, President Salazar. So I have a few items on the report of the administration division that I'd like to highlight and um, also give out a few kudos as I go through the report. Um, the first item is an update on our rulemaking activities. The sale, transfer, or discontinuance of a practice regulations are under final review by the Office of Administrative Law, and we should know the outcome in mid-August. We also have three packages that were discussed today and another rulemaking and development from action taken at the March uh, board meeting. And I want to quickly give a shout out to the staff who are working on these packages. The documents and the steps involved are complex and staff have been doing a great job as have their managers and chiefs who are providing guidance and this thank you also extends to dca legal and staff in the regulations unit who provide valuable assistance and we're making great progress on these packages the next item is a follow-up on the cba office relocation during the may CBA meeting, it was requested that staff explore reducing the CBA's current office space to determine if there would be a similar cost savings in comparison to the proposed plan to relocate to the DCA headquarters location. Following the meeting, we consulted with DCA facilities to obtain the requested information and as displayed in the chart on page two of the division report, the biggest savings would be to stay course and proceed with the relocation to DCA headquarters. Additionally, under our current lease, there is a potential for our rent to increase as the rent is based on the California Consumer Price Index and is adjusted annually, and the cost reflected for the DCA space will not increase during the term of the lease agreement. As reflected in the report, we also highlighted the considerations we gave regarding the impact on staff and the positive aspects of the relocation. One of the areas we're looking forward to is exploring, uh, looking forward to exploring more is the increased opportunities for collaboration with DCA and other board and bureau staff. Um, and I wanna provide an update on the CBA's network migration with DCA. Uh, we're still working on some post migration activities. Part of the migration impacted our application processing timeframes and they increased slightly, but I assure you staff are working diligently and over time to get the timeframes down. Additionally, the migration impacted um, some of your access to your CBA email account, and if you are still experiencing problems, you can reach out to our um, executive assistant, Katrina, and she can make arrangements with an IT staff member to get your email back up and going. 
the primary benefit that this network migration was to um, bring to the CBA is the ability to address and counter our IT, um, growing IT security threats. The network migration was a huge lift on both the CBAs and the Department of Consumer Affairs part. Um, I had the opportunity to kind of watch from the sidelines during the migration um, when it took place the first week, first weekend of July, and it was like clockwork. It's like one thing, and that it was just it was pretty amazing to kind of watch. Um, but I want to give a shout out to DCA's IT staff, led by Baird Cowan. Um, he was the chief technology officer, and he provided great guidance and support to the to the board um, during the migration and continuing on to today. Also want to recognize our CBA system administrator, Dave Hansen, as well as um, many thanks to our other IT staff, Rich Andrus, Manny Astacio, Amir Larian, and uh, Alan Taylor, who also played a critical role in working behind the scenes and responding to staff, uh, staff service requests. Um, that concludes my presentation, and I'll turn it back to President Salazar, but I'm happy to answer any questions. We have a hand raised, Ms. Chu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just want to do a shout out that migration, I can imagine it's complicated, convoluted, uh, difficult. And um, for my part, the little that I have involvement, just getting my um, password and all this stuff, went very smoothly. And I love the new system. I hated that thing, whatever that thing was called. <laughs> The Yubi key? Yeah, the Yubi key. Oh. I don't know what that is, but I remember the name. I hated it. <laughs> Any additional comments about the items in Ms. Pierce's uh, presentation? All right. I will open for public comment at the very end of this agenda item, but I'd like to turn it back over so that we can move along to the next item. Okay. I'm going to be presenting the communications and outreach report. Uh, the CBA's commitment to outreach and education remains a high priority. Uh, just last month, our CBA Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Rosenbaum, spoke at the American Academy of Attorney CPAs annual meeting and education conference in Monterey. The 60 attendees were treated to an informative discussion on the CBA's regulation of licensees, how CPA evolution will impact the future C CPA, and the importance of CE to maintain knowledge and competency when providing services to consumers. Our next outreach event is planned for September and will be held in conjunction with the CBA meeting at Cal Poly Pomona. During this event, we are planning two presentations for students, one for undergraduates and one for those in the graduate program. CBA staff members will be in attendance to meet with students and review their transcripts to provide guidance on the classes they need to meet the education requirements to sit for the CPA exam. In the past, students have expressed great value in this service, and we're happy to be a trusted par partner in nurturing their success. Additional outreach events, both in-person and virtual, are being considered for the fourth quarter. The CBA launched a communications campaign to announce the Students Understanding the Requirements to be a CPA, or SURE CPA Project for short. Staff created a page on the CBA website that features an initiative overview and provides a link for students, graduates, and recent licensees to take the SURE CPA survey, which was um, exposed during the May board meeting. We hope to generate lots of great feedback about how these groups understand the educational requirements for licensure. And in just the first few days, we had about uh, a little over 50 responses um, with much of the communications campaign still to come. We partnered with the California Society of CPAs to increase survey completions and get more robust data, robust data set. Cal CPA communicated with their student and recent licensee membership base to inform them about the survey, and we thank them for their assistance and ongoing collaboration. In late June, staff met with Cal CPA's Accounting Educators Committee, um, also referred to as AEC, who provided important input about students and recently licensed CPA's thoughts about the educational requirements. Staff will con continue the conversation at the AEC's next meeting in October, and we very much appreciate their partnership and insight in this initiative. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to all the members who took the time yesterday to participate in the filming for our outreach videos. I thought it went really, really great. Um, if you are not able to do so this time around, there'll be another opportunity at the September board meeting. So please keep that in mind and we'll be um, con communicating that as the meeting approaches. The CBA fiscal year 2022-23 annual report is 
currently being prepared. Like other reports this year, you can expect, expect a fresh new look with the information presented in an easier to digest format. The final version will be presented at the November CBA meeting. The CBA social media pages are constantly growing and surpassed the 12,000 followers mark last month. The CBA's LinkedIn page continues to generate the most growth, increasing 9.4% in just the second quarter. And then we have some new staff from the Information and Planning Unit joining us here today. Um, we, just to go back a few years, our uh, Communications and Outreach Unit was one person. It was our information officer, and now we're up to four positions, and that's just um, keeping pace so that we have the staff resources necessary to do all these amazing outreach events, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, you met Jacob Sudia at the May meeting, but he's here today in the back there. Um, uh, joined, he, oh, there he is. Um, we have um, two new members to the unit. First, I'd like to Sorry, I need to. Oh, there it goes. My microphone was. was cut again. Apologies. Hold your place. I need my mic. Um, um, so Sherry Oakman, she's going to be um, working on our CBA annual report, amongst other tax tasks. And a fun fact about Sherry: she has a master's degree in accounting, so she's a great fit here. <laughs> Um, our other new hire is Andrew Finkel here. Um, he joins us from DMV and has a background in broadcasting and managing high profile social media accounts, uh, especially at the DMV where I'm sure they get lots of media. So <laughs> um, yeah. he's very excited to be working here and he's getting started on creating a CBA social media calendar to enable us to more organized approach to posting consistent content and it will elevate our messaging. So we're happy to have a full team led by our information and planning officer, David Hemphill, who's um, not here today, um, but we're excited to kind of see what, what, what is ahead of us. So, um, and that's my conclusion of my report. Well, thank you for that, Ms. Pierce. Comments or questions from our board members? Okay. I'm not seeing any, so I'm just going to throw one in there. I'm super excited about this, and I'd also like to thank our Secretary Treasurer for leading by example and speaking at Monterey. Uh, you look good at the podium, like the photos in here, uh, but it is so important for our board members to be engaged, and so I do just want to say thank you, and also, Sherry, Andrew, welcome. Very exciting. Um, have you here? Uh, so seeing no other public comments while I stretch, or no other board member comments uh, on this agenda item, uh, or rather either agenda item, A or B, we're now gonna move on to public comments uh, for item number nine. And I will ask if there's any public comment here in the Sacramento location. And seeing no public comment here, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the Q&A for public comment on item nine, agenda items A or B. The Q&A is now open. The instructions will be on the, are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that question mark, type comment, send it to all panelists. If you're calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand. At this time, no requests. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. And then that, that concludes agenda item number nine. And when you flip my page over here, that brings us back to our next agenda item uh, that we would like to take would be the report of the enforcement chief. And so I'd like to invite Ms. Carrie O'Connor, our Deputy Chief of the Enforcement Division, to share the enforcement activity report with us. So thank you again, staff, for your flexibility and letting us pull some agenda items forward. So welcome, Ms. O'Connor, and take your time. And when you're ready, uh, you are welcome to proceed. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Carrie O'Connor and I'm the Deputy Chief of the Enforcement Division. 
The activity report before members today is for the first 11 months of fiscal year 2022-23. Starting with complaints received, the CBA received a little over 4,000 complaints. The graph on the bottom of page one provides a comparison of the total complaints received as of the same reporting period for the prior two fiscal years. Members will see that compared with the prior two fiscal years, we have received an increase, a 60% increase over fiscal year 2021, and a 20% increase over the same period for the last fiscal year. On page two, we have included information on the top three complaint types, with complaints regarding unlicensed activity being the top complaint type. Moving on to investigations and investigations pending on page three. At the end of the first 11 months of the fiscal year, staff closed over 4,500 cases with 99% closed within one year. The average days to close investigations was 126 days, which is a decrease since the last report. Enforcement had just over 1,600 cases in its pending investigations inventory. You will see an increase of pending cases in the six to 12 month bracket compared to fiscal year 2021-22. This is due largely to the influx and in the number of unlicensed complaints received. There was one case over 24 months pending, which is still actively being investigated. Members will see that the average age of our open cases is at 113 days. Discipline-related information can be found on page four of the report. Looking first at AG referrals, the CBA referred 35 matters to the Attorney General and filed 28 pleadings, with the majority being accusations. The CBA had 24 matters pending at the AG's office. And lastly, the CBA has taken action on 33 final disciplinary orders. Moving on to citations and fines on page five, the CBA issued 367 citations. 55% of the citations were for a specific violation related to the 20 and 12 continuing education requirement. The CBA received 61 citation and fine appeals, and we have withdrawn or more modified uh, 44 of the citations. In most cases, the licensee either provided new mitigating evidence or complied with the issue that resulted in the issuance of the citation. Page six contains information regarding unlicensed activity. The CBA had received a little, uh, over 1,800 complaints regarding unlicensed activity, and we have closed um, 2,200 investigations through the first 11 months of the fiscal year, with the majority closed as a result of compliance. The final area of the report that I'd like to highlight is on page seven related to probation monitoring. As of May 31st, we had 81 individuals on probation. We identified 49 probation violations with the majority being failure to submit written quarterly report. And at this time, I'd like to turn discussion on this item over to President Salazar and would be happy to answer any questions members may have. Great. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. I do have one question for you to, to kick this off. On page six of seven at the bottom under the unlicensed activity outcomes, just a clarification for me, uh, where it says closed for compliance, does that mean they were found to be compliant? What, or, what does for compliance mean? It means that we reached out to them for the issue and that they um, rectified the matter and complied with what we were asking them to do to become in compliance. Okay, so thank you. I, I appreciate that. So um, I could have imagined another interpretation of that. So wonderful. I so appreciate that. I don't know how it didn't occur to me last meeting, but somehow I read it differently today. Um, do we have any other comments or questions for Ms. O'Connor? Ms. Ward? Um, I do have a question um, also linked to your question. So if you reached out to someone and they were out of compliance and they did what you requested to become in compliance, is there not a citation issue for being out of compliance since there's no type of um, discipline for being out of compliance and providing procedures, not procedures, that's what I do, providing services. 
So if I understood the question correctly, uh, we would issue a citation if the compliance wasn't achieved. We don't use the citation. The citation can be a compliance tool, but if we can work with the individual um, and get that compliance, then we won't issue the citation. Can I, I oh, Ms. Corrigan? Yeah. Thank you. On page five of seven, where we are the presentation for citations and fines, it just seems that the 20 and 12 requirement is just an ongoing challenge for licensees. I'm sure we have plastered all over our website what the requirements are and are doing our best to publicize that. I don't know how we improve that. It just it seems like it's an ongoing issue. That is correct. We have taken um, a lot of opportunities to provide outreach and education to the licensees regarding that requirement over the last eight to ten years. Excellent. Thank you. Any additional comments or questions? All right. Um, I would like to, at this point, invite any public comment here in Sacramento regarding the report of the enforcement chief for the enforcement, advice, enforcement activity report. And seeing no public comment here, I'd like to invite our WebEx moderator to please open the WebEx portal uh, Q&A to invite public comment on item 12A. The Q&A is now open. Instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on the question mark, type comments into 12 panelists. If you're calling in, press star 3 to raise your virtual hand. No requests. At this time, would you like me to close the Q&A? Uh, yes, moderator, yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. Thank you very much, Ms. O'Connor, for that presentation. That does uh, conclude item 12A. It is now 11.37. Okay. And we, I believe we have time for another agenda item before we uh, move into a, a break. And so I would like to move on to agenda item number 13, which is the report of our licensing chief. So I'd like to um, actually, uh, the first agenda item is the licensing activity report, item 13A. So I would actually like to amend that and welcome Ms. Sarah Benedict, our manager of license renewal and continuing competency unit to the table to present that agenda item. Welcome, thank you. My name is Sarah Benedict and I am the manager of the License Renewal and Continuing Competency Unit. The Licensing Activity Report, or the LAR, covers the period of time between July 1st, 2022 and May 31st, 2023. The LAR begins with the reporting of processing times. Processing times were below 30 days on March 31st, 2023, but we are expecting a slight increase in processing times due to the recent server migration. We anticipate the increase in processing times to be brief. The CBA began accepting nano, blended, and adapted self-study continuing education courses on July 1st. Now, if you turn your attention to page two of the LAR, there were over 92,800 stakeholder inquiries in the form of emails and telephone calls. This is inclusive of CBA calls directed to the DCA call center. On pages three and four, as of May 31st, the examinations unit has approved 4,325 first-time applicants to sit for the CPA exam. The initial licensing unit has approved just over 3,000 applications for CPAs and firms. Now I'm going to move on to pages 5 through 7, which is data related to renewal statistics, renewal deficiencies, and continuing education audits. Table 7 includes the CE audit data. 828 licenses have been selected so far for an audit in fiscal year 22-23. Of those, 646 have found to be compliant. Table 8 includes the population data. As of May 31st, the CBA had a grand total of 115,600 licensees and registrations. And that concludes my presentation. I will now turn it back over to President Salazar and I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you, Ms. Benedict, for that report. Do we have any comments from our board members or questions? All right, seeing none, I would like to go ahead and open for public comment here in Sacramento. Agenda item 13A, licensing activity report. And seeing none, I would like to invite our WebEx moderator to open up public comment in the Q&A on the licensing activity report. This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click on the question mark, type comments, send it to all panelists. If you're calling in, press star three to raise your virtual hand. At this time, I see no requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, moderator, please close the Q&A. Thank you, Ms. Benedict, for your presentation. And that concludes our agenda item 13. So that brings us to 1140. We're actually scheduled to work through 1230 prior to the lunch break. So I would like to uh, recess into a 10 minute break and then we will uh, come back in 10 minutes. When we return, I will be reading us into closed session and we will be moving along uh, in closed session matters. So thank you very much.